straight ahead on Law and Crime Daily. Very strange when one day you're uh, Cinderella, so to speak, and then in 0.6 seconds you're Quasimodo. Johnny Depp takes the stand to tell his side of the story in his multi-million dollar defamation case against ex-wife Amber Heard. And my mother was quite unpredictable. We take a closer look at Depp's direct examination, how he says an abusive relationship with his mother affected his marriage to her. Plus, I will live with that for the rest of my life because of the allegations and because it was such a high profile case. So I lost then, no matter the outcome of this trial. Depp details how Heard's op-ed article allegedly impacted his career as cross-examination begins. Then later... What happened? Heard's attorneys present audio and video recordings showing a glimpse inside Depp's Hollywood home. Law and Crime Daily covering court cases from coast to coast. Welcome everyone to Law and Crime Daily. I'm your host, Brian Buckmeyer. Eyes and ears have been glued to the multi-million dollar defamation case this week, where Hollywood exes Johnny Depp and Amber Heard face off in Fairfax, Virginia. In this special episode of Law and Crime Daily, we're highlighting just a few of the jaw-dropping moments from Johnny Depp's testimony. But first, a little background. The $50 million lawsuit brought about by Depp against ex-wife and fellow actress Amber Heard comes from an op-ed Heard wrote in the Washington Post in 2018, after their messy 2016 divorce. Heard details being a survivor of domestic abuse. She doesn't name Depp in the article, but has repeatedly accused him of domestic violence during their short marriage. Depp claims it was actually Heard who abused him. About six years ago, um... Uh, Ms. Heard made uh, some quite heinous and um, uh, disturbing, uh, brought these disturbing criminal um, acts um, against uh, me that uh, that were not based in any species of truth. There were um, arguments and um, things of that nature, but never did I myself r reach the point of um, uh, striking Miss Heard in any way, nor have I ever struck uh, um, any woman. Since I knew that there was no truth to it whatsoever, I felt it my responsibility to uh, to stand up not only for myself um, in that instance, but stand up for my children. It's been six years of trying times. It's very strange when one day you're... Uh, Cinderella, so to speak, and then in 0 0.6 seconds, you're Quasimodo. Truth is the only thing I'm interested in. Other lies will get you nowhere, but um, lies build upon lies and build upon lies. It's too much to cover. I, I, I'm obsessed with the truth. All right, Jesse, welcome back from Virginia. Based on what you've seen in court, do you think Depp is trying to win this case, or is this a way of rebuilding his reputation? What a great question there, Brian. Look, at one point, I think his case is, has legal limitations, legal witnesses, weaknesses to it, and it makes me wonder why did he bring it. The larger question, well, does he want to rehabilitate his image? You know, he might lose this case, but if he comes off as so likable, and he's speaking not only to the jury, but he's speaking to the world at large, perhaps he will get his career back. Perhaps he will reinvigorate people's reception of him. The problem is there is so many bad things coming out against him, audio recordings, videotapes, that at the end of the day, and he knew this was coming out, 
you have to wonder what is he doing here? Is he at the if he's coming off as so completely honest and transparent that I'm not hiding my drug abuse, I'm not hiding the text messages. I did this, I started this, I wanted the world to see it, but I want them to know that I was hit and abused by Amber Heard and I am the victim. Maybe in the end of the day, that is what he's hoping for. But I think there are problems in his legal case, particularly tied to the defamation of that uh, Washington Post article, that could be a really significant problem for him in convincing this jury that Amber Heard found liable uh, for what he claims were falsities. All right, real, real quickly, let's talk about that op-ed. What if uh, there's an argument to say that it's only partially the op-ed that ruined his career, not completely? Does that change the analysis here in any way, shape, or form? It has to all be the op-ed. That's it. If he can't show the harm and damage came from that op-ed, you have to think he's not going to win his defamation claim. All right, we'll see how this goes. But, hey, he could change his whole image. Think about uh, Robert Downey Jr. from 1996 when he had those gun and drug cases. Now we all love him. Maybe that's Johnny Depp in a couple of years. We'll, we'll see how that plays out for him, though. Thank you, Jesse. We'll see you in a few moments. Still ahead on Law & Crime Daily, more in-depth details about the tumultuous relationship between famed celebrity Johnny Depp and actress Amber Heard. But first... She's a need for conflict. She's a need for violence. The only thing I learned to do with it is exactly what I did as a child. The tree. Depp details his childhood on the stand and the supposed impact his relationship with his mother had on his marriage as our coverage of the Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard defamation trial continues. our coverage of the high-profile defamation trial between actors Johnny Depp and Amber Heard as the two exes square off over a Washington Post op-ed written by Heard describing herself as a survivor of abuse. Depp's now been on the stand for three days. Ahead of Depp's testimony, jurors heard multiple witnesses describing the relationship between Depp and his mother. Depp's sister testified last week about the siblings' shared experience with their abusive mother and how Depp would often run off and retreat. While on the stand, Depp himself described his mother and then compared that alleged abuse to his relationship with her. I had a very interesting childhood, um, one that I thought was normal until a certain age. My mother was quite unpredictable. She had the ability to be as, as cruel as anyone can be. She was quite violent, and she was quite cruel. There was physical abuse, certainly. My personal experiences, which I gave to Miss Heard, those, those things were, those, those, those facts were used against me um, as, as weapons. It was not to help the relationship. It did not help the relationship. It wasn't meant to help the relationship. It was meant to feed her um, need for conflict. She has a need for conflict. She has a need for violence. It erupts out of nowhere and uh, what I learned, the only thing I learned to do with it is exactly what I did as a child. Retreat, just take a step back. But why did I stay? I stayed, I suppose, because my father stayed. I suppose because I had been in that relationship with Vanessa and that was lost. And I didn't, I didn't want to I didn't want to fail. Joining us today are our own celebrities. Of course, we've got co-host Terry Austin and again, law and crime host Jesse Weber. Terry, Heard's attorneys seem to be, at the very least, suggesting that Depp is capable of abusing Heard. But is that enough to sway the jury? You know, I think this jury is Team Depp, so to speak. I think that the attorneys are trying to portray him as being violent, being drug addicted being verbally abusive. But just because all of those things are true, he might smash walls. He may be addicted to opioids. 
he may drink a little too much. He doesn't consider himself to be an alcoholic, but he drinks a lot. He thinks he holds it well. But none of those things really mean that he beat his wife. So I think that the jury is listening to this, but I don't necessarily think that they are buying it all. He described one time they were in Palm Springs with Kelly Sue, I think is her name, and he couldn't remember her name, but he was protecting Amber against this woman who touched Amber, and he was trying to say that he didn't want anybody inappropriately touching her. So I think so far, even though they have shown he's a bit on the violent side, it's not directed towards Amber. All right. Jesse, real quick, Depp is captivating on the big screen. We know that. He's obviously captivating on the small screen, as many of our viewers at Law & Crime Network are watching that live stream. But you're in the court. Is he captivating in person, too? He really is, and I think for the jury especially, because there is a very short distance between him and the jury, and I've been watching them intently, and they are watching Donnie, Johnny Depp intently. They, they don't really take their eyes off of him unless, of course, they're looking at an exhibit on their screen. This is somebody that you just, you're hinging on every word he says because it could either make or break his case. And as for everybody in the gallery, like myself, i got to tell you there are times that we are laughing and we are stunned by what Johnny Depp is saying. So it's almost like a, a mini movie. I don't know what kind of movie, but a movie within a real life. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how this play out because they're both actors and, and actresses. Um, are they gonna lean to more of the Harry Potter, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean kind of vibe? Or are they gonna lean more to the Aquaman? I don't know, but it's gonna be interesting to see how they kind of battle that out when they're both on the stand. Well, we're going to continue with this story. Thank you both. Coming up on Law & Crime Daily, our Gavel to Gavel coverage continues in the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard defamation lawsuit. Up next, Depp's back-and-forth cross-examination as he's asked about the Washington Post op-ed article. more now on the Johnny Depp vs. Amber Heard defamation trial in Fairfax, Virginia. Direct examination wrapped up on a high note as Depp testified on the op-ed written by Heard, which started this case in the first place. Well, it was a hell of a start, I'd say. Reading it and reading the words that uh, she had uh, written, it was obviously referring to our relationship. It was obviously referring to me. Did you experience any consequences after the release of the op-ed? Absolutely. Cross-examination of Depp kicked off late Wednesday afternoon, flipping the script when, the Her when Heard's attorney asked about the article just moments later. In the opinion piece that's before you, published in the Washington Post, she wrote, then two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse, correct? I, I can't say correct. She, she wrote it. And the piece doesn't did. contain your name, correct? No, it does not, no. And other than mentioning the fact of abuse accusations that were made two years prior to the publication of this article, the opinion piece doesn't contain any details of your time together, correct? Oh, I, I think that her, um, I, I think it's very easy to write a piece and put the finger on someone without saying their name. All right, so Tara, we saw that beginning of the cross-examination there. We know her's gonna take the stand and someone's gonna ask her the exact same question. Is this op-ed about Johnny Depp or not? If she says no, it's another guy that she's pointing to. If she says yes, it's Johnny Depp. How are either of those answers gonna change this case? You know what? That's another excellent question, Brian. And that's something that Depp's team should absolutely ask her. Who were you referencing here? If you weren't referencing Johnny Depp, then who else was abusive to you in your life? And who is that by name? Tell us all. Who are you talking about and what violence are you talking about? She never mentioned anyone else either in public or in writing, to my knowledge. And it's a clear implication that she's talking about Johnny Depp. She uses the time frame two years ago. Everyone knows she was referencing that TRO when she claimed that Johnny Depp was abusive to her. And I think the attorneys are trying to show that Depp 
is abusive his whole childhood. He's been dealing with it, not just as far as his mother is concerned, but also as far as his father is concerned. They made sure the jury knew that the father had been violent as well and punched him. And Johnny even made a little joke about the fact that it got his attention. So they're trying to make Johnny Depp out as someone who definitely could inflict violence against anyone, frankly. Yeah. And Jesse, that's kind of my question for you. Terry touched on it just a bit there. As you look at the direct and cross examination of Depp, what do you think either side is focusing on, and which approach do you think will win this case? Well, for, remember, his side, they're not only trying to win the defamation claim, they're trying to defend themselves against Amber Heard's counterclaim. So the more that they can show that she was the abuser and he didn't fight back, the more that they can show that she faked her injuries, that might be definitely a win for him against the counterclaim. That doesn't necessarily mean that he would win the defamation case. So again, he really has to show that he did not emotionally abuse her, physically abuse her, or psychologically abuse her in any way. And for her team, they are trying to show that this is a guy who was completely out of control. He derailed his entire career, before, even before the Washington Post article, and Amber Heard was only there to try to help him, not hurt him. If there was anybody that it was an abuser in this case, it was Johnny Depp. That is what their side is really trying to hone in on, and I'm sure that they are going to continue to do that when they continue the cross-examination of Johnny Depp. Now, John, uh, now, Jesse, I gotta ask you real quick, which side do you think is, is leaning more towards winning here, Johnny or Amber? I think they're both gonna lose, frankly. <laughs> I think from a legal point of view, I think he's gonna lose the defamation case and she's gonna lose the counterclaim, and at the end of the day, we're all gonna be left with their dirty laundry trying to pick pieces. All right, well, I'm not doing other people's laundries. I've got my own, and so we'll see how that plays out as it continues. Thank you, Jesse and Terry. When we come back, it's actor versus actress in a multi-million dollar defamation suit. Still ahead, attorneys present recordings revealing insight into the relationship between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Welcome back to Law & Crime Daily, continuing our coverage on the ongoing Johnny Depp and Amber Heard defamation trial. Now, into cross-examination, Heard's attorneys grilled Depp Thursday on his drug use and alcohol addiction and worked, to, and worked to point out inconsistencies in his testimony, presenting text messages and recordings of the couple. What happened? And that's you in the video, Mr. Depp, right? That's correct, sir. And you would agree that you were violent in that clip, correct? Clearly, I was having a bad time. I don't, uh, I don't know what it was uh, with regard to completely at this point, since I don't know the date. But um, I thought what, what was most interesting is that she <clears throat> tried to hide it from me, and then that she laughed and smiled at the end. I thought that was the most interesting part myself. But so, yes, you didn't I, I did assault um, a couple of cabins, but I did not touch Ms. Heard. Testimony from Debt continues Monday. Law and Crimes' Angela Levy will be live all week as we bring you gavel to gavel coverage. Terry, what do you think of the video of Debt smashing things in his own home and how he and Heard react at the end of that video? Well, you know, I think anytime someone tries to surreptitiously record someone, they are trying to catch him in a point of time where he is violent. And he did not know that video was going. I knew from the second they started that video, because look at her moving that cup, making sure the video had a clear view. And then ultimately, she tried to hide the video when he came a little bit closer. So I think that clearly he's being violent, but not a single hand touched her. So for me, it doesn't show that there was any violence against Amber herself, against her person. It simply shows he was angry about something, and he took it out on those cabinets. And I think it was a little bit of light humor on his part, and I think the jury probably appreciated that. Yeah, I think it's an interesting choice of words. I would have said he's more frustrated in terms of throwing things around. Violence has the connotation of attacking someone, which is very different, but 
we're lawyers, that's what we do. Jesse, there were two texts that stuck out to me, one of uh, Depp apologizing to Heard's father, and another about having other uses for Heard's throat. Do these implications of abuse prove Heard's case, or do they fall short? So it's a few things. You could look at it from Johnny Depp's perspective. He has very colorful language. Um, you know, is he actually being serious or not? Uh, the text that you're referring to is where he, he talks about that he won't do injury to her throat, implying that maybe he had actually harmed her in the past. The text to the father suggests that, you know, he, he said Amber Heard's almost like an angel. She did everything right, and that he's to blame for a lot that happened. But you also couple that with texts that where he continually apologized to Amber Heard, but to a level where, again, it implies what did he do? Did he engage in some sort of physical violence? But again, for Heard's side, any form of physical or psychological or mental or verbal abuse can be enough to say that that is domestic abuse. That is enough to support her claim in the Washington Post article and that, in fact, she was telling the truth. Yeah, it's interesting because we're talking about this Washington um, Post op-ed and, and all these other things. I haven't heard either side specifically go to the language of that op-ed yet. Uh, it's more just kind of general. It's going to be interesting to see when they get into the nitty-gritty how that plays out. Well, Jesse, Terry, thank you as always. And thank you for joining us here on Law & Crime Daily. We'll see you next time as we discuss justice in America.